and I'm passionate for the Korean flavors I grew up with in the States. In this series, I'm traveling back An to An easy South scallop and spring onion pancake, perfect for sharing. And mussels, given a Korean kick with Wow, a we have baby octopus here? Yeah, yeah, we gotta get a couple of them, huh? Yeah, you can eat these right out of the tank. Oh, they're Look, right. here. Yeah. So, should we get some uh, rock cod? I so, don't know rock cod too much. What is, what is... Well, it's got like a white sort of white sort of texture. It. Just grab a piece, um, dip it in a little bit of the soy sauce. Pick out your fish and yeah. then take it to a restaurant and have it cook it up for you. It's true. And don't forget to add your salt. And in order for it not to stick, I'm going to make a little snowflake and right through Child's the fish. Play. And this is going to taste absolutely delicious when it's done. And so I'm just going to place it on my Because we like things a little bit spicy. And leave it out if you want to. You don't have to add it in. Wow, I just got hit by a gorgeous smell of ginger the, um, the square shape yeah what kind of oil does she use to cook it in? Oh, yeah. Spring yeah I think that's great <laughs> yeah <laughs> recipes inspired by my travels later I'm at the beach eating the freshest of seafood scissors just cutting these through adjust according to your taste and I like to use red and green chili not too thick, but not too thin. They're best served when they're piping hot and nice and crispy still. Get a good. I'll start out with one of these, because this is just ginormous. Okay. <laughs> this Kijoge. is Kijoge. And then we'll... Amazing. Some fresh, good quality chicken stock. Have to make a curry. And I like to serve my mussels with sticky rice instead of a baguette. I think it works well. American chef and food writer now living and working in London. And I'm passionate for the Korean flavors I grew up with in the my States. My dad's favorite ice noodles, nem young and the ultimate sweet summer treat, creamy red bean popsicles. Medicine markets in Seoul. So as so you know, Korean people love to take care of their health. And um, we also use a So lot the of fresh ones, food. the harder they are, the, mm -hmm. the better quality? And yeah, and also straight body. Unusual version. So this black chicken's kind of crazy looking. It's got black skin. And the, the meat's a little bit darker, Cheers. too. Cheers. Konggangul mm. bihae. Oh, wow, circulating good. and get their mental activity going. Wow, I can smell that already. I'm also going to use dried ginseng. And this interesting ingredient is called a jujube. These are Asian dates. You can find these in the any. And because there isn't a lot of rice in those guys, I'm going to put a little bit of extra. black sesame seeds, chili threads, pea shoots, finishing I touch. Guess, like, of just the purists do it, right? Mmm. I mean, how do you rate this? I go over my mom doing yeah, two that. Times. Yeah. And my grandma always says the secret to making the recipe of uh, year cheer, which means fight heat with heat. So in the in the middle that of summer. That might sound strange, but this whole dish is about balance. There's savoriness, there's sweetness. With that, so the people aren't struggling to eat them. I like to make a special Throw topping on top of these. my very cold beef stock. Traditional treat from my childhood, which is just as popular now. Hello. Yes. Popping soup. Serious inspiration to make my own version of an ice lolly using red bean, which I know everybody is going to love. These red bean ice lollies, really savory, sweet, and delicious. Stuffed with red bean. They're chewy, toothsome, stretchy, <laughs> kind of fun to eat. I love Korean fried chicken. It's Saturday night in Seoul, and everyone is out enjoying Korean fried chicken and beer. <laughs> Welcome to Korean Fan Made Get some Spice. And hopefully inspire you to try some tasty Korean flavors with family and friends. Find out why in this Korean show, fried chicken is the tastiest and the best on the planet. Korean fryer is perfecting his chicken recipe, and in a few months, he's grown from a tiny stall to a three-story restaurant. Garlic, and ginger, onion, and basil, rosemary, 
Oregano. Some salt and pepper just to have a little bit of seasoning. Lay them out so nothing's touching. It retains its and this crispiness for a lot longer than regular breadcrumbs. Some baking powder, some garlic powder no, is vodka. And vodka is a little trick that I learned from working in kitchens. Thermometer. Just so you can keep track of your temperature as well. And you do have to be careful when you're cooking with hot oil. Ketchup. It's almost like an Asian so style barbecue. Mm -hmm. You know, any kind of fermented bean paste, uh, soybean paste. It adds so to it has a almost like a yogurt like texture. Yeah. So it's very soft, and it, it helps. I love the ginger one. Different types of flavors and a different level of saltiness. Garlic, a couple of cloves. I'm gonna use gochujang, just the seeds. Add. And then, because it is a type of slaw, we're gonna use mayonnaise, but our Asian mayonnaise. Korean taco without kimchi. I love avocados. I think they're low temperature, fantastic. so it doesn't burn and it has the right flavor. So what goes into your soju? It's very natural organic. Mmm. This is my kind of cocktail. Fine sieve. It's easier to pass through the sieve while it's hot. Ooh, I'm using. using a lemon zest to make things look beautiful. And it's just a little hint. This is Gwangjang, one of Seoul's largest and most popular markets. And I'm passionate for the Korean flavors I grew up with in the States. In this series, I'm traveling back to South Korea. It's a show-stopping noodle dish. Some sizzling soy and sesame chicken skewers to tours share. around the market, and he's brought me here to try a particularly famous street snack, a crispy mung bean pancake. Oh, called bean bean bean. oh and this one is the one that's got um, some pork on. Yeah. Do it? Yeah. Okay. Come on, eat still. We forgot about the japchae. She says it's very delicious. Oh, there we are. Tangled noodles. Ugh. Need a bit of muscle <laughs> to get them out. Just plunge them into some bread. Always season your proteins ahead of time, and then all of that good flavor will stay in them. Chicken or different types of seafood, mussels, and it's usually a street food, but when you make it, it be going for about six to seven minutes. Ooh, you'll see, yep, they're done. I love that springy texture of the noodles. Now, this is usually served as an appetizer. But what I'm really here for are the chicken skewers. I'm Judy Ju, bringing you my guide to the best of Korean, Korean flavors. Street food is really dynamic and interesting, and it's fun. But you don't have to eat street food Korean just cooking. on the street. It does take it. a bit of time to organize things, but cooking it is really quick because everything is sliced so thinly. So if you just in, and I'm going to stuff away to make a nice mayonnaise. One left. And it's a taste that Koreans get homesick for. I'm here with Mrs. Kim, who's making her special dough, which is a unique. This is going to be a wet dough, so don't be alarmed if it looks more wet than you. Cheese in them, honey, maple syrup. The flour is going to start flying around, so I got to put an apron on. That's because of the perfect combination of the different three flours that I used. Okay, I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm here in the very wet, but very beautiful Chunju, a traditional city that is often regarded as one of the cultural... My name is wow, Judy Ju. a bucket of these. In this show, I'm reinventing some classic Korean dishes. Later. But first, I'm in Chunju, exploring the traditions of Korea's best-known dish, bibimbap. Okay, five different tastes. Okay. The cooking techniques. Mm -hmm. All right, so... There's raw, um, a few uh, secret technique and sauces. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you about it. It looks like just uh, ordinary sauce. One of my most favorite dishes. And whenever I go out to a Korean restaurant, I usually order it. Master sauce, which is going to start out with some ginger, a little bit of garlic, two cloves, my master seasoning. Let's drizzle that on top. Now I like I'm gonna to use cook my tongs. My tongs. <laughs> I'm gonna dump my spinach in. The pan's so hot, this is going to wilt down right away. I'm going to drizzle some of this spicy hot sauce on. 
<laughs> She's splashing, so it's really hot. <laughs> basically to strain things. And what they want is now being collected in this big aluminum with heavy stones. And within half an hour, the whey drains off and the tofu sets. And that's because it's really, really soft. It doesn't hold its shape on its own. What you can see about it, though, is that it really is. I'm going to start that with a little bit of gochujang. It's sweet, it's spicy. I'm not a vegetarian, and I do love to eat my meat. But I do love also... Ah, okay. So apparently the green tea also fights cholesterol levels. This recipe is called bosam, and it really is for sharing. It smells even you better. And we're going to cut off the skin. It's a bit rubbery. The traditional Korean table always has a myriad of sites. And it's places like this tea house in Jeonju that help keep Korea's food traditions alive. <laughs> Families traditionally celebrate every month in the States. In this series, I'm traveling back to South Korea from the buzzing metropolis of Seoul to the swarming snack. I'm going to eat these all before my guests arrive. <laughs> and I show you how versatile kimchi is, bringing called miyokguk, which Korean moms make for their children on their birthdays. A tradition that they play. Yeah, right? We are a modern family, but I've also noticed that there's so many traditions in Korea. Yeah. One of the things that I, I've seen, and you're going to teach your children all of these uh, traditions. I don't They're literally like compacted you. rice. And what they do is they make little cakes and then they slice them. They're a little bit dry. Now for my main marinade. Soy sauce, sesame oil, roasted sesame seeds. Her marinade, Ginger. so she didn't have to add it in the pan later. And then I'm going to add my sweetened beef. As quickly Shake as possible, because they're, they're hurting me, <laughs> making me cry. Again, Black you don't ones. want to brown. Black ones and some white ones, whether it's your birthday or not. Wow, OK, so that's about $300. So you must make them yeah. the best doshirak. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> if you have time. Coming up, my simple lunchbox recipe for bite-sized crab stick fritters. And I get tips from the expert. And this is a variation of another really popular Korean dish called chun, which is literally easier. These are done in no time. They really only take about a minute on each side. In Korea, the family kimchi recipe is passed on from generation to generation. Blue. Much like in Garlic. Mouth. Now we have to cut some vegetables up, right? So let's start chopping. Every time. Put a little bit more garlic, even though the kimchi has enough garlic in it. Now, fried rice really is hard boiled eggs. People just eat them as snacks, like you would an apple. Definitely such yeah, a someday. sad. Someday. You should learn too. <laughs> Korean city commuters are officially some of the hardest working people on the planet, leaving them very little time to I'm eat. I'm a Korean American chef and food writer now living and working in London. And I'm passionate for the Korean wow, flavors. I can eat a I bucket of these. <laughs> in this show, I'm making super simple and fresh fast food. Quick Later. and easy foods in Korea. I'm here in Kalguksu Alley in Namdaemun Market, where all of these dolls serve hand cut or other. It's a bit like rolling pasta. It's a little bit easier. My pastry skills are coming in. And ooh, really, really, really hot. This great mystery freeze dried vegetable pack which has, Chilis. and then I've got denjang, which is Korean miso paste, but it's a lot stronger, it's more fermented. And and stick them in, and you turn up the heat, so they start cooking. Yeah. What I love to they do. always have instant noodles on hand, so if you can always ask the stewardess for some instant noodles. My instant ramen I noodles. I do the lift and blow, because they're ah. so hot. Okay, too tight, too tight. Okay. <laughs> and tastiest Korean mandu dumplings. Look at the sheer size of these. But first, my recipe for a simple do-it-yourself kimbap. I kind of like that salt that's been kissed by the sun and the sea. It's a bit fun. Sweet, actually. Cucumber. It's almost like a rainbow. 
Every country has their version of the dumpling, and in Korea, they're known as mandu. It is a carrot. So the carrot one turns yellow because you maybe because salt. Oh, so you put salt in it, and that makes it this beautiful. I'm gonna add it to pork and beef. I've got a two to one ratio there. Even it's gonna throughout, heat it. and you have to break up that tofu. And I think that that is just don't overcrowd your pan. So I'm armed with my frozen yogurt to go, and I'm gonna see where this 24-hour city takes me. Popular hangout among hungry Koreans. And every restaurant is dedicated to one thing, barbecue. My Later name. on, I show you my secret to the ultimate Korean-style barbecue chicken. Barbecue restaurant. I make it crunchy. These are true temples of carnivorous dining, and I've met up with three members of the popular K-pop boy band, uh, U-Kiss. U-Kiss? Uh, U-Kiss chef? Mm -hmm. You did? Yeah. Uh, so we you all, guys all cook? We all cook. Okay. All right, well, you guys tell me what you think. Okay. Of, my, of the way I make samgyeopsal. This is coming from a chef. <laughs> okay. What is it? And sweet potatoes, which is a natural side for chicken, and in Korea, we eat these this all the time as snacks. Kind of an American fusion type recipe. I'm gonna use maple syrup. I love that. Right in there. And that's gonna cut that sweetness. It's best to use boneless. Whenever I think of barbecue chicken being American, I think of corn. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna smear that all over on top. Korean chili threads. Prawns, octopus, shiitake mushrooms. Radish, seaweed, red and green chilies, and another really interesting. Coming up, I show you how to make Korean side dishes, a crunchy cucumber kimchi. And later, I roll up my sleeves with a butcher who uses the finest and most expensive Korean beef. Perfect. And thin strands to make a great pickled radish side dish. And pickling dried shrimps, um, shrimp paste. Korea is no different, and we use salted shrimp. Try this. I'm gonna put a good amount. Of this will have all of the great fermented flavors going on inside. Has recommended the, the perfect fermented. dish for a meat lover like my dad. Kalbi. Kalbi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they really are masters of beef. So I'm gonna start out with a nice piece of ribeye, and you want to slice that. Some salt. It's Korean sea salt. Soy sauce never replaces salt. Adds a little bit of a different flavor. This really is the ubiquitous sauce that I love throwing on top of everything, from pizza. It just keeps on standing still. Oh, that was good. Koreans don't need an excuse to celebrate food, but when one does come up, they certainly go to town. This truly is a country that is obsessed with food. Welcome to Korean Food Number Made one Simple. national treasure, kimchi, to create a traditional stew. I show you my recipe for a rich, this hearty kalbi. This food is absolutely chip. everywhere, and there's one word on everyone's lips. Kimchi! But your burrito, how, how did you kimchi fry your burrito? <laughs> There's a kimchi aioli and also kimchi. Pork. And now I just have to find a place to sit and dig in. <laughs> you can just buy it like that. You can see it's about half a centimeter thick, and it's like fresh it bacon, a lot more sour, and it tastes sour, and it has a bit of a brownish color, and it turns almost opaque. But I am gonna add one other extra kick. It's a little bit of gochujang, which is our fermented chili paste. And then add some tofu. Now tofu comes in many different varieties. This is firm tofu. Pickled seaweed, cucumber, and carrot salad, some steamed rice, and of course my kimchi jjigae. It's called samde gompang, and it literally means three generations, and it's been around for over a hundred years. And I visit a Buddhist temple to try some exquisite vegetarian dishes. I feel like I've just but sat first, down. Here's at a my recipe for a surefire family favorite dish. Go the onions and ginger. Some good flavor with the ginger. So stand up better in stews like this. And I'm gonna add these small little chantonnay carrots. Don't forget about the toppings. A little bit of fresh enoki mushrooms. Our julienne shredded. Which one is the, the big attraction to you? Me? I would have to say this for every vegetarian soup. I'm gonna cut a piece. And this is the source of umami. Oh, umami. that's gorgeous. And this stock has taken on a really great golden color after a bit of creaminess. It is to add a couple of raw eggs. 
which I'm going to mix the grandest through. of festivals to something as sacred as a religious ceremony. And food is always involved.